everyone, it's Annabelle and welcome back to my channel. In today's video we're going to be repotting this huge Mastavalia, which is the Mastavalia Parlatoriana, which I believe is a synonym for Splendida, which is a cross between Barliana and Vecchiana. I last repotted this on camera and it's grown quite a lot since then, um, it's really enjoying the Ceramis mix that it's in. The issue is it's drying out very quickly and it's getting to the stage where uh, the new growths are actually at the edge of the pot and it's not going to be long before they're growing over the edge which as I've discovered with other Mastavalias is not ideal. So I'm going to be repotting this. The only pot I have that's larger that still allows me to have a um, clay or ceramic outer is this large clay pot. So it's a 15 centimeter diameter. You can see this orchid has grown quite a lot since I last repotted it. I'll pop an image up on screen of the last repot. So this is the largest that I can sort of repot it into that's still got the cooling effect of having a ceramic or clay outer which is what I've been kind of aiming for with Mastavalias, having the outer pot um, like a clay type media so that it's also cooling the root zone as well as the clay media. I'm just going to take this out. I'm not going to fiddle around too much with the root zone. Um, First of all, I'm going to tip off the pebble top layer that we've got on there. It's in a quite an even mix of Ceramis and Lekka. I'd say mostly Ceramis, probably like 60% Ceramis, 70% Ceramis, um, with a little bit of Lekka and Pumice mixed in. So first we're just going to tip off all of the pebbles on the top and I will reuse them along with some others that I've prepared earlier. And now that they're mostly off, just going to try and hold the master value over the new pot so that any media that falls out falls into the new pot since I'm reusing and also be very careful of that little root that's poking out of one of the holes down the side. Now these ventilation holes I don't think are necessary for master valias. I was reusing this pot just pull out very carefully and that root just comes out very easily and just pop some media on the bottom to start off with. So yeah the ventilation holes I don't really think are necessary um, for Mastavalias, they may be for other orchids um, and particularly with organic media which is what I was reusing this pot from. It's got quite a lot of media left in there. What I did was I tipped in the media first because the root zone wasn't quite reaching the bottom of this new larger pot so just to put some media below the root ball and I haven't bothered trying to um, remove any media because it's inorganic and Mastavalias don't really need a high air to moisture ratio. What they need is a high moisture ratio with some aeration. But um, you just want to prevent the new growth from rotting. And initially I had a moss top layer on this, if you'll remember. Um, I started off doing that. Moss grows extremely well on Ceramis, which to me indicates that it's a good environment for orchids because moss likes a similar kind of environment that orchids like, low salt and kind of not a desiccating or dry environment. However, the moss actually became a little bit suffocating around new growths. It would grow very rapidly and it kind of smothered the new growths and I started getting rot issues with the new growths that I then stopped getting as soon as I actually took the moss off. So... I don't do that anymore, not saying it can't work, but for me it didn't with the media combination I'm using. So I've just gently tapped the pot to try and settle the media into any gaps. We don't want any large air gaps in this pot. And now I'm just going to fill around with some more media. I've made up a new mix because we've run out of the um, media that was in the pot because it's a larger pot it's going into. So this is a similar mix. I've included a bit of lava rock as well for a bit more aeration as well as the pumice and lecker. This Ceramis is the small grade Ceramis that I can buy in the UK. If you buy from Orchitop or Vickman or Kadeen, uh, you get a larger grade Ceramis. So just bear that in mind that not all Ceramis is the same. And I am trialing that out at the moment in a media trial. The large grade Ceramis I quite enjoy for larger rooted orchids. But this smaller grade is what I use for um, all of the orchids that I'm kind of saying I'm putting in Ceramis unless I specify that it's the larger grade, which usually is like Oncidiums, Miltoniopsis, and Mastavalias, Restrepias, that sort of thing. So I'm growing my Mastavalias all in the lounge. Um, I've explained a little bit about my setup before, but I'll just uh, give you a quick overview. They're growing in the lounge, so that's our coolest room in the house of this house currently. 
Temperatures in winter range from lows of 12 degrees Celsius at night, although it's more commonly 14 to 15 degrees Celsius at night. And winter day times tend to be sort of 16, 17, going up to 18 to 20 degrees Celsius in the evenings when we're all home and the heating's gone on. Um, summers, night temps drop to sort of 18 to 20 degrees Celsius and day temperatures stay 22 to 24 degrees Celsius. Um, I do try and leave the window open to get lower night drops because if you're keeping them warmer it really helps them out to have a night drop in temperature to allow their metabolism to kind of catch up um, which is I think a major thing with cool growers growing them in warmer temperatures if you can give a night drop in temperatures that'll often keep them going through warmer spells they can't be grown warm or hot year round um, but they can get by and with my master valleys I've noticed a real divide so some of my master valleys like this one just don't seem to be phased at all by hotter temperatures and some I notice definitely decline in summer and perk back up in winter so there's actually a definite difference between the master valleys that are kind of warmth tolerant and the ones that are not and I don't necessarily think this is purely due to the elevation they grow at for example this one has Vecchiana and Baliana in its parentage now those are both really high altitude cool growers and yet it's super tolerant um i've got the master value coccinia that i got in a haul from a nursery earlier this year and also that's a high altitude cooler grower that just doesn't seem phased it's a massive orchid and it's growing really well um so i would say just a general very very loose observation is that the very large growing mastervalias seem to be a little bit more warmth tolerant than the more miniaturized types and the larger mastervalias do tend to have slightly thicker roots like this one whereas some of them can have slightly thinner roots but none of them are ever restrepia like so that's the media mix that i've got it in and we'll be able to monitor the root growth because there are some roots that are still reaching the outside of the pot here and i'm going to be keeping it in this pot for now um I've been keeping my zygopetalums and my lycasti in this type of pot and they're doing really well. They're unglazed though so I'm going to monitor mould growth because I feel like if they're unglazed they're also going to wick water which will enhance the evaporative cooling effect but may cause some issues with me having a reservoir of water in there. It may make the reservoir um, decline quicker. If not with my other ones, but I'm just going to monitor it during summer. So um, we'll see how that goes. But I keep a reservoir of water constantly. If you're going to grow Master Valleys in inorganic media, it has to be moist all the time or you will lose roots and lose growths as well. So that's something I would say about keeping them in inorganic media. I found it to be very successful for most of them. Um, some of the ones prefer a slightly thicker gravel top layer that are prone to rot because the gravel top layer just stops any rot issues. Ceramis is a very, very moist environment. It's not like Lekka at all, really. It's uh, extremely moisture retentive, this grade of Ceramis, and it stays moist all the way up to the top. So for me, the top layer is more more than stopping it desiccating which is what i use the top layers for a lecker it's actually um almost stopping rot as well so it's not wicking it stays quite moist and humid because the ceramis is staying moist all the way up to the top layer but it's also not gonna cause any rot issues if you kind of have to slightly bury new growth in the gravel because although it'll be humid it's not going to be wet and it also stops algae growing on the top of the ceramis and also seems to deter moss although I still end up getting sometimes some moss growing in the pot and like between the gravel it just stops it and slows it down a bit compared to having loads and loads of moss growth on the top and the moss growth looks great but like I said it's just an issue with rot with master valleys. Um, it'll rot the new growth so very thick layer of moss so yeah I'm finding this one is doing really well several other of my master valleys are doing really well some of them i'd go through seasonal slumps and then they perk back up um it's just the way it is in the new place i might try and keep them in the garage possibly because there's not really a cool room in the new place like there is here it's like or, or there is but not one that i'm allowed to keep orchids in let's just say so yeah that's kind of my general chit chat about mustavalias growing them in the home um in the uk 
it's summer at the moment this one's doing great no dieback at all lots of new growth this one has flowered for me twice before last year in late summer and beginning of autumn so i'm hoping it'll spike again we'll see i hope that this has been useful anyway just a brief overview of how i'm keeping it and a little update because i filmed this one before when i repotted it last with that moss top layer so i guess an update on the moss top layer and how that's doing and the new growths and stuff and it's growing quite a lot as you can see so i'm really happy with its progress um and we'll just see how things go we do a heat wave again soon we have had a heat wave a couple of weeks ago it got to like 30 degrees celsius in the lounge like hot overnight like i think night temperatures were like 28 so it survived that um it's got lots of new growths coming which i've just tried not to bury too much as you can see and just really happy with how it's doing and how it's growing for this one so this is a hybrid i would definitely recommend to grow in more intermediate temperatures and it's warmth tolerant i wouldn't say any masturbalia is going to be warmth loving but some of them will tolerate it better than others and it's just finding those ones that do and this one i would definitely say does as would um i say that coccinia does as well so that's it all repotted into its new larger pot with a clay outer with a nice deep reservoir because this is a super thirsty orchid hopefully we've got um we've got a few centimeters on each side we've got growths coming from all sides so probably another year or so is worth of growth in this i fertilize these guys the same as all my other orchids with the same mix but what i then do is i take my fertilizer solution that i've prepped for all the other orchids and i dilute that by half with my zero water so they get like half the amount of everything that the other orchids get because um they're just not heavy heavy feeders and salt buildup on these can be pretty disastrous I hope you've enjoyed this video hope it's been useful and thank you so much for watching today if you did enjoy this video then don't forget to give it a like or subscribe to my channel for more regular orchid updates and i'll see you guys all later bye